Okay, here's a look at Magic Square's MS-02EX Light of Peace. So here's a look at the front of the box with the nice line drawing of Optimus Prime done in this uh, metallic uh, rainbow color finish, which is kind of cool. Back warnings, words and stuff with that same metallic finish. Top of the box, Magic Square's logo with the same metallic finish. Nothing on the sides or the bottom, so that's a look at the box. And here is a look at the figure and all of the accessories that you get. So first, let's take a look at his uh, rifle. You can see it's nicely sculpted, very tune accurate. And what's cool is um, there's no screws on here. So this actually cleans up really well, just like uh, the figure. So that's uh, cool. And you get his uh, battle axe here, which has a darker shade of orange, which I think is cool because uh, it actually looks more like the tune and it's actually better than the other versions out there, which is more yellow. And you do get uh, two adapters here for the trailer. So here's this one's for the MP44, which is nice. And here this is for MP10, which uh, doesn't make sense to me considering that this is very tune accurate. Um, I don't know why you would want to attach a, a toy version trailer to a very tune accurate Optimus. But here, this version, you do get... Um, this uh, Starscream head and chest that you can attach so you can kind of replicate that scene from the cartoon which is cool if you like to take pictures or do some stop motion and stuff and here is the instructions done on a single pay fold up page which you could fit all of the uh, detail drawings on here which are nicely done with the red and green call outs um, but in terms of the transformation, uh, it's pretty much the same as their uh, Legend scale. Just uh, some differences, but the major difference being uh, the quality of the plastic that they used is uh, not very durable. So this causes some issues during uh, manipulation um, for transformation. And here is the uh, bio card, which... Um, has that line drawing kind of capturing that rainbow color from that metallic uh, finish on the packaging design and uh, I actually kind of don't really like this I think uh, maybe they were trying to suggest that this is like a premium masterpiece figure but I think they could have done a better job um, suggesting that but here is a look at the figure and uh, you could see that uh, this looks really nice this looks like it just stepped right out of the cartoon cleans up really well and that's the major reason why I got this and to my surprise when I got it uh, this figure is not as light as I thought it would be considering the you know the type of plastic that they used and the little die cast that they put on the foot um, doesn't really make a difference in terms of stability or weight. Uh, I think the good amount of weight just comes from all the extra plastic that's uh, inside this figure. So again, it's not too light, not too heavy. I think it's just a good amount of articulation. So in terms of comparison, uh, let's compare this with the animation model. And you could see that as always they did a nice job capturing the tune aesthetics you know all the little details here which I'm very aware of because you know I did a lot of drawings of Optimus Prime growing up as a kid so I'm very aware of like all these uh, little details here the triangle the details on the thigh the four you know rectangles on the lower leg the triangle on the corner of the lower leg and even the back, I think they did a, a nice job, you know, with uh, the tune accuracy, the cylindrical shape here on the back, the triangle on the thigh, the rectangles on the lower leg. Um, again, I did my own um, 
study drawings of this uh, when I was making my costume. So yeah, I'm very aware of all the details and uh, they did a really nice job um, capturing all the tune aesthetics. So uh, in terms of uh, articulation, first uh, let's come up close here, take a closer look at this head. And you could see they did a really nice job sculpting this head. I really like that head. But uh, it is on a universal, so it can go up, down, rotate, side to side, all around. And the shoulders, you could see it, it, it does have like a double jointed shoulder joints. So you can hear the ratchets here. And this side, and yeah, the tolerance is really tight so you have to be careful when using this one and that's uh one thing i'm noticing with magic square they do not do a good job controlling the uh tolerance on their figures some areas are tight and some areas are too loose but um yeah you could see it's uh has a bicep swivel here which is tight and this is a uh, an issue because this does need to rotate during the transformation but you can see because it's so tight you have to use force which causes uh, tension and stress on other areas uh, that you know put this at risk for um, causing uh, breakage so you need to be careful but you do get a double jointed um, elbow you do get uh, wrist hand rotation and i like the way they handle the details on the fingers here the thumb is on this ball joint so you don't have concerns where it's stuck like this you bend it down you break it you could see the pin there you get an extra point of articulation for the uh, digits so that's really nice and you do get uh, waist rotation uh, on friction you do get uh, ab crunch that's really tight and they use screws so in case it gets loose you could tighten that up and uh, the legs you can hear it does have a nice clickety ratchet going forward and back and this is one of the known issues um, which is uh, this hip skirt here gets stuck and after carefully examining this um, they should have fixed this because um, this is not needed for the transformation. So this is just poor uh, execution on their part of not uh, fixing this. But you can easily fix it so it's not uh, too much of an issue. Uh, but the legs can go out to the side and they you do get thigh rotation. You do get... Uh, a double jointed uh, knee and one of them does have that nice clickety ratchet so that's really cool and then the feet does have ankle rockers and it can toe tilt up and a little bit down but one thing that gets really uh, messed up here is uh, this is designed a little bit different than their legend scale so you could see that this kind of gets stuck here and then you get the rear lights being exposed. I think they should have just used the same design on the foot as they did with uh, the legend scale because yeah this this tends to cause an issue here but you can always fix that. So in terms of the articulation you do get uh, the good range of articulation and actually I forgot one other articulation that you get you do get a uh, butterfly joint here, so that's uh, cool. I know some people really like the uh, butterfly joint. So yeah, you get a full range of articulation, which is cool. But just some of the issues I pointed out, the tolerance, like a lot of their figures, it's uh, really tight. And it's an issue when it's part of the transformation that you have to use force. Um, which causes uh, stress and tension on other areas, which, you know, puts you at risk of damaging this figure. But looks really nice. And um, one of the features that you get, that now we get with a lot of the Optimus, is that the chest opens up to reveal this chamber. 
that holds the matrix and you could see they did a nice job detailing this and painting it and it does open so he does have his matrix unfortunately they didn't design it well enough where it was very easy to get this matrix out but you can get it out probably with a spudger or something but that's uh, something nice that you get so yeah this is a uh, really nice uh, nice looking figure so in terms of uh, comparison let's uh, bring out the uh, official Takata Tomi version and as soon as I do this the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the comparison with New Age because here you could see Magic Square and here is New Age and um, uh, the differences between the two as always is um, New Age always has that nice uh, premium uh, look to it with the paint finish, the nice shiny gloss and die cast and it's no different here with the, the Takata version. It, you know, it has that nice paint finish, it has some die cast in here, it has that nice shiny look to it that gives it this nice premium look to it and the quality of the plastic is a uh, much durable here much better so i don't know if you could tell the difference but um uh, you listen to the sound like you can hear that sounds hollow because this is not very dense plastic and here you could see it feels much heavier so it's more dense so this is much uh, sturdier plastic and this one it just easily causes a uh, um, stress when you bend it and that's why you get like um, you know those uh, hairline fractures and stuff like that where you know it easily bends and you could break it so that's um one of the major difference and uh it's not like the magic their legends version which you know has that rubbery type plastic which is actually um, accommodates the way they design their transformation where you have to bend plastic over plastic. You can't really get away with it with uh, this type of plastic because every time you're bending the plastic over plastic, you're causing uh, tension and stress on this. And you just need, I'm telling you that because that's something you really need to know when you're manipulating and transforming it. So you have to know what you're doing, how to manipulate it just to avoid any uh, damage to this figure. But um, in terms of the difference, like I said, you know, um, this one just has that more premium look and finish to it. It's using better quality plastic. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, just like New Age, you get all these pins and uh, parting lines uh, exposed and it doesn't really clean up that well on the back uh, and some other areas on this figure particularly. You got that huge backpack as a consequence of the uh, electronic sound feature that you get here. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's just the, the difference. And one way I like to describe the difference uh, in terms of aesthetic is that this one, he's he's more lean and cut, kind of like Bruce Lee. And this one, he's more bulkier and strong, kind of like Rocky Balboa. So that's kind of like how I like to describe the difference between these two. Because both of these, they do capture a lot of the tune uh, aesthetics. It's just like I was telling you. Some of the differences, you know, this one doesn't really clean up all that well, but it does have the nice paint finish. This one, you know, does clean up well, uh, but, you know, the type of plastic that they use is not so good. And um, the way it's des the inch transformations designed, it's... Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, you have to be really careful, particularly with this one, because, like I said, it's not using that rubbery plastic that accommodates for the bending plastic over plastic. So, yeah, that's uh, one of the mis issues. But if you're aware of it, you know how to manipulate this, you can get around it. But um, that's um, the difference uh, between the two, and um, 
In terms of uh, this figure, uh, this is <laughs> a really nice looking figure. And again, that's the main reason why I got it. It just looks uh, really nice. So now let's uh, transform this to his uh, alt mode and take a look at that. Okay, here's a look at the alt mode. And first, let's uh, compare this with the animation model. And you could see that, uh, yeah, they captured a lot of the tune aesthetics. Uh, here, the gas tank here, you could see it kind of has that flat rectangular shape. And the headlights also, it has a square shape. But this one does have uh, that little circular uh, shape in there kind of re replicating the headlights but the front here it's missing uh, some gray paint here so it's a little off there but um, yeah you could see for the most part uh, they did a, a nice job capturing the tune aesthetics but the back uh, they didn't give us a trailer so yeah this is the closest we can get there but um, if we take a closer look uh, you could see they did a nice job capturing all the details. Actually, the uh, sculpt of the rims here, the details, the rivets and stuff, that's actually um, the same as the original um, official MP44. But this, you could see it has like a silver paint finish. It's not done in that same chrome. So uh, it is a little off, which I'll show you in a little bit. But uh, you could see it has some nicely sculpted in detail, which is not tune accurate. It's kind of like the G1 toy, but um, yeah, it just adds more of a like a realistic look to it. So it's kind of like that fusion. Same thing here with the uh, headlights. I mean, not headlights, the uh, windshield wipers. Uh, that should not, well, sometimes I think it's in the cartoon, but yeah, they gave you that. And what's nice is uh, this is also painted. But what's cool is, uh, you know, they gave you the uh, nice chrome plated parts, which adds a, a really nice accent to it. And the back here, you could see this one cleans up really well. Um, yeah, the headlights here, it's nice that they gave you some paint, but it would have been cool if uh, could have got some transparent uh, plastic. That would have looked uh, a lot better. But yeah, you could see uh, it's done uh, really nice. And uh, I did attach the uh, adapter for the MP44 trailer. So here, let's just attach that and uh, see what this looks like. And you could see, <laughs> yeah, this looks uh, really nice. Both of these are the tune version. This doesn't have that blue stripe, which is the toy version. So that's what I meant. It doesn't really make sense. They gave you one for the MP10. But you could see, yeah, this looks really nice. And um, here I could show you what I was talking about, the wheels. Um, they're using the same type of wheels, but here this is uh, chrome plated and this is silver painted. So, yeah, it's not really consistent there. And uh, I know a lot of people probably don't take notice of it or it doesn't matter, but for me, you know, being a really nitpicky perfectionist. Uh, it's just one little detail that's off, but just thought I'd show you that. And now for uh, some comparisons. Uh, here, this is the um, KO version of the uh, MP44. So first of all, um, this one does not have that nice paint finish. So, uh, yeah, you're not going to get that nice uh, glossy shine or the uh, reflections on the parting lines from the uh, light hitting the beveled edges. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, still close enough. So let's take a closer look and comparison between these two. And you could see, yeah, um, they both look okay. And this is what I was telling you. The headlights here are more tune accurate. This one, they did appear in the episodes a couple of times here and there. That's just, you know, animation error or something. But, um, yeah, uh, these, I don't really know what else to point out other than the major issue. You could see, man, this does not clean up well. And it's really hard for me to speak to this because 
uh, I am a little biased towards Takata because they are o an official um, uh, company and uh, because I have background in product design, you know, I would expect things like this not to happen, but it did. And uh, I'm doing my best to be objectively uh, honest here uh, that, yeah, that's uh, not very good. And you can see with Magic Square, they did a nice job cleaning that up. But I will say, you know, the, uh, the trailer attachment, it is incorporated in the design. So it's not like a parts former here. Uh, so that's just one difference that probably doesn't make much of a difference. But um, other than that, yeah, you could see uh, they, they both look okay in the uh, alt mode. And here, let me get rid of Magic Square real quick just to point something out that, well, I was wrong. You still kind of see all this junk in the trunk back here. So yeah, uh, that didn't work out so well. But um, in terms of this figure, um, yeah, it, it does roll nice, but that's only if you get this nicely transformed correctly. Because if you don't, if it's a little off, because there's so little clearance on the bottom here, uh, you're gonna start scraping off this paint. So that's just maybe something to be aware of if you transform this Yeah, it needs to be transformed correctly where it's rolling on all Six wheels so that it doesn't scrape the bottom here, but yeah, uh, nothing else to point out other than maybe I forgot this which is um, these doors actually do open but yeah, you can't put anything in there and that's mainly due to the uh, transformation design so but yeah it's kind of cool how they made it so you can fake it till you make it that uh you know figures are going in there and the official actually opens up too and there is a little space in there that cavity but it's only big enough for the really tiny figures but you know, you do have that option here to kind of make it look like the doors are opening. So that's uh, really cool. Um, other than that, um, nothing else to point out. It's just a, a nice uh, alt mode. And I'm just trying to appreciate this now because this is uh, uh, the last time I may see this in alt mode. Because I plan to keep this in robot mode. So that's a, a look at... Um, the alt mode so now let's uh, transform it back to robot mode and have our final thoughts okay my final thoughts on this figure overall this is a, a really nice looking figure uh, it definitely uh, looks like he just stepped right out of the cartoon they captured all of the tune accurate details it cleans up really well it has a good amount of articulation uh, which you do have to be careful because of the tolerance uh, with certain areas but um, the major issues that I already pointed out such as uh, the type of plastic that they used uh, it does not accommodate for the way the transformation is designed where you have to bend plastic over plastic and uh, that causes uh, easily causes stress on these uh, plastic parts and also because the tolerance is so tight you have to apply force which causes stress uh, on other areas which just also uh, increases the risk of uh, causing uh, stress and potential breakage but you know like I always say you know if you are aware of that you know how to uh, manipulate this to get around it, um, it it's it's you can work around it uh, but the main issue or the main thing for me is um, how well does this look? I mean, this looks really nice. Uh, you can get some good poses out of it. And again, that's the main reason why I got this figure. And just to show you, since I didn't show it during my review, is um, how does he look next to some other masterpiece figures? So here are some of the official and... Um, here, this is the KO. Uh, it doesn't have the wobbly legs, but it does have that nice paint finish. So you could see the difference here that I was telling you. Uh, this doesn't have that nice uh, paint finish. Uh, so it technically doesn't really uh, blend in really well with the other official masterpiece figures. 
but you know it still looks uh okay but um i just wanted to point that out um because uh, this is not going to go with my official masterpiece collection because of that uh, but this is an extra masterpiece that I have that I really like and so you know I'm just gonna have this around just to play around with and appreciate uh, how, how nice this uh, figure looks um, but with that said I'll also let you know that um, <laughs> I'm also planning on getting the fans toys version uh, and that one also is not going to fit in with my official masterpiece uh, because, you know, there's some differences. And, um, yeah, I, I hope Fans Toys does not uh, paint the uh, forearms yellow. And I hope they get rid of that gold because, yeah, that's not too accurate. They seem to be um, fans of uh, the gold finish. But anyways, just thought I'd let you know about that. But in terms of this figure, like I said, overall, this is a, a nice figure and I'm going to give it a generous rating of 9 out of 10. And I don't give recommendations because if you want it, you'll get it. If you don't, you won't. But I'll tell you that um, this is a nice figure. And if you do get it, you just need to be aware of uh, what I pointed out. You know, the plastic quality, you have to uh, use caution when... Uh, manipulating this or transforming it just so you don't uh, uh, damage or break the figure so with that said that's uh, my review and um, uh, this is a, a great figure if you want to add it to your collection is it really you Optimus Prime I mean really yes Spike this time I am definitely me or I myself or whoever I am Put her there, partner.